Hell Let Loose is coming to console, and I'm very excited about this game getting to console. I've been an avid Hell Let Loose player for a very long time, and today in this video, I want to give you guys everything you're going to need for Hell Let Loose, every single shred of information. It's going to be a bit of a long journey, and there are going to be chapters down below, so you can jump in between different bits of information. But if you find this helpful, please do leave a like and subscribe. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and it means a lot to me. Hell at Loose is arguably the first hardcore open scale shooter to come to console, and it's a very different game. It's hardcore, it's gritty, the time to kill is very fast, and when the combat gets thick and fast, things can get intense very quickly. But because it's such a different experience, there's a lot you need to know in order to be successful in the game. And that's exactly what we're going to go through today. We're going to talk about the game setup and how things work, we're going to talk about roles, teamwork, movement, combat, and vehicles. Everything you need to know to be successful successful in Hell Let Loose. And there's a lot of stuff here that might not seem obvious, but is very important. Even something like combat isn't simply a case of aim, point, click, bang. It really doesn't work like that in Hell Let Loose, and the systems can be very intricate. To start with, we're going over the game setup. Hell Let Loose has multiple modes, but all of them focus on a simple principle of attacking or defending objectives, or having to do both at the same time. Primarily, Hell Let Loose is split into two game modes, Offensive and Warfare. Offensive is an invasion style game mode where one faction has to attack and another faction has to defend. If the attacking faction captures the sector, then you get pushed back to the next sector. It's a little bit like Rush if you've played that in Battlefield, except it's capture points and not MCOMs or anything of that variety, and very reminiscent of the breakthrough mode if you've played Battlefield as well. Fundamentally, there is a front line and you have to defend those two objectives or one objective on that point, and if you don't, you get pushed back. If you're attacking, your job is to get into these points, get as many spawns down as possible, and try and overwhelm the objective and take it from them. The Warfare game mode is a standard version of Conquest in Battlefield if you've played that, and it's simple. You either attack or defend, your squad could be a defending squad looking after the objectives you already have, or your squad could be the attacking squad taking care of objectives that are in the way. But fundamentally the difference with Warfare from traditional Conquest modes that you've seen in other games is that there is still a front line. There is only one objective to attack and one objective to defend, or two objectives to attack and two objectives to defend. You'll never have a scenario where you could be capturing eight or more objectives randomly throughout the game. There is still a very stable and strong front line, and front line combat does exist. Overarching the Warfare mode and the Offensive mode is a chain of command and a teamwork system that is a requirement for you winning the game. There are individual squad leaders and there's even a commander for each individual team. And these squad leaders and commanders have to work together to ensure that certain things happen in the map. For example, they might coordinate to make sure that tanks are taking out other tanks. They might coordinate to send artillery to certain locations. But critically and most importantly, they coordinate the supply chain in the game. The supply chain in Hell Let Loose is resources that can be used for certain things. You can specifically get supplies in-game to build spawn points, such as garrisons, and squad leaders also have their own backup version of a garrison that only their squad can spawn on, which is a rally point. But garrisons are fundamental to winning the game. If you don't have garrisons, you don't have places for your team to spawn. If you don't have places for your team to spawn and they get killed, then you're going to lose the objective. Garrisons can be placed with adequate supplies in the area, and they can be destroyed by simply moving up to the point and interacting with it. And they're very difficult to destroy because you have to get through swathes of enemies to get there, but once you get them, you take out a very quintessential part of the enemy team. There are three ways to get supplies in Hell Let Loose. The most important ones being logistics and supply players. Now, logistics are logistics trucks that spawn at base that can drop off supplies to any given location. They just have to drive them there, interact with the truck, drop them off, and squad leaders can build the garrisons they need. The supply role is an actual role within individual squads, and every once in a while supply guys get rearmed with supplies that they can drop for squad leaders to build garrisons as well. The final way to get supplies is a call in from the commander who in desperate times can call in an actual physical supply drop to drop out of the sky for you to build garrisons. Supplies are also necessary for other things as well, such as building bunkers, building anti-tank guns, building any kind of defense you could possibly imagine, such as barbed wire, anti-tank hedgehogs that block the road, or just basic sandbag material to build up your general area. Defenses are primarily built by supply guys, but there are certain things that can be built by other people, such as the anti-tank gun or field gun, which is buildable by anti-tank players. 
So supplies are fundamental. If your squad does not have a supply guy, take the supply guy. If your squad leader tells you to get in a logistics truck and drive it to him, do that. Because if you don't do that, your team will lose the game. Alongside the traditional supplies that allow you to build garrisons and spawn points and all the important stuff that you need, you can also build nodes. This is again the function of a supply player or a supply role, and you can build individual nodes such as the manpower node which allows the commander to boost resources within an area by dropping things like supplies or safely removing a garrison, and there's also the munitions node as well which allows you to use the artillery guns at your main base to use some pretty lethal force across the map. So that's the general game setup and everything you need to know. Primarily, it functions on a supply system, whether it's logistics trucks, the supply role, which you can get in individual squads and squad leaders. Squad leaders need to work together to get as many spawn points down as possible. And also those squad leaders need to work together in order to coordinate the game. Your squad leader might ask you to attack an objective or defend an objective, but fundamentally it's important that you follow what they say. And I'll mention more why in the teamwork segment later on in this video. Speaking of which, teamwork. Let's talk about teamwork in Hell Let Loose. Hell Let Loose is a large scale shooter. One player isn't a drop in the ocean and can't really make a drastic difference to a game unless they're doing 101 things a thousand times right and doing it regularly. You need to coordinate within your squad, with your squad mates, with players who are in your local area to get things done and do things effectively. If you have five squads attacking an objective and nobody's defending, you will lose a game. If you have four squads attacking, only one squad defending, you will lose a game. If nobody is bringing supplies to the front line to build more spawn points and you lose your garrison, you will lose the game. Overarching all of this is the communication system in game. And on consoles, it's really easy. You press triangle to talk, and if you hold down triangle, you can select which voice channel to talk to. Your local chat is a proximity chat which works up until around 30 to 50 meters, and your squad chat is allowing you to chat to your squad mates. If you decide to squad lead, you also get an extra voice channel called the command channel, which allows you to speak to the commanders and the other squad leads as well to coordinate and get things done. Teamwork is fundamental. You need to use your microphone as much as humanly possible, and if for some reason you can't, at least make sure you're listening to what your squad mates or squad leaders are asking you to do. Whether it's gathering supplies, defending or attacking, you need to listen because chances are this is a very intricate web of things going on. If a squad leader tells you to defend an objective, it's not because they don't want anybody to attack the next point, it's because they need people to defend whilst the other squads go and attack. And even if things seem a little bit boring or a little bit slow paced at times, these things are absolutely essential. And time and time again in Hell Let Loose, games are lost because one team is less coordinated than the other team. So make sure you hold triangle or Y and select your local comm area or speak to your squad individually and get stuff done together. It's a push to talk system, so it's really easy. You tap it once if you want to start talking and you tap it again when you want to stop talking. Teamwork in Hell Let Loose is absolutely essential and you can have some really fun moments just by chatting to the random guy next to you who's laying in a ditch. He might not even be in your squad, but you can work together and try and beat the odds against you. Most essentially though, if you do decide to take up a squad leading role, it is on you to tell people what to do. And you can even designate your squad as an attacking squad, defending squad, a microphone only squad, in order to encourage more teamwork. And make sure you communicate with people. People can sometimes be shy, a little bit unwilling to talk, but once you get them out of the shell and once you tell them what to do, chances are a lot of people are receptive to teamwork. And again, teamwork is essential. Supplies are needed, garrisons are needed, spawn points are needed, defending is needed, attacking is needed, and if nobody is coordinating absolutely anything, you're gonna find yourself in a tricky situation. It's also absolutely fundamental to communicate because if I'm 100 meters away from you and a tank rolls past you and I'm an anti-tank player, I need to know what you've seen. I need to know where that tank is going. Is it heading north? Is it heading south? Is it heading east or west? Is it going to an objective? Is it using a certain road? If you relay that kind of important information, you can help your teammates. And if you spot a squad coming towards your objective that somebody else hasn't seen or other people haven't noticed, you can alert your entire squad mates or anybody in the local area really to go to that point and defend that area. My highest record of anti-tank kills and taking out vehicles is 11. I took out 11 tanks in a single game. And it was only possible because I had lots of people relaying information to me at the same time. Hell, even the commander was telling me where things were happening. 
Next up, let's talk about the roles in Hell Let Loose. And there are lots of different roles, and some of them are more important than others, and some of them you should avoid until you get a bit of practice with it. Or if you want to use it, try and learn from video guides or guides that you see online before you really dive into it. There are certain roles like the anti-tank class, which is very effective for winning or losing games, and if you don't know how to use the rocket launcher, then you might be in a little bit of trouble. The most important role is the commander. The commander pretty much oversees the entire game, speaks to squad leaders, tells them what to do, speaks to the armor divisions, tells the tanks where to go, and speaks to the recon divisions. They are the people that oversee and coordinate everything. Everybody speaks to them, and they speak to everybody. If squad leaders tell you that there is a tank in a certain part of the map, it's the commander's job to then tell the armor division that there is a tank over there in that part of the map, go blow it up. You won't see a lot of action as a commander, and you're kind of more of a communications point, so choose this role wisely if you like a little bit of leadership and a little bit of responsibility. Moving on, we have the squad leader who oversees the entire infantry squad. They tell the squad what to do. If there's a commander, the commander will tell the squad leader what they want them to do, and they will relay that information. But a squad leader is important because they can place garrisons, which are the main spawn points, using supplies. They also have the ability to place a rally point or an outpost, which is a backup spawn point that can only be used by your squad mates. But ultimately, as a squad leader, you got to tell people what to do, you got to tell people what you want them to be doing, and relay information to each other, you know, get people talking. It's your job kind of to get people communicating, tell an anti-tank player what you want them to do, hunt vehicles, defend an objective, tell a machine gunner where you want them, etc, etc. Next, we have the standard rifleman, the assault player, and the automatic rifleman. Riflemen, assault players, and automatic riflemen are pretty much the same thing with different loadouts. Riflemen basically have individual bolt-action rifles or semi-automatic rifles, but most importantly, they have ammunition. They place ammo, they can get anti-tank players rearmed, they can get people who are using machine guns rearmed, and can use their ammo very effectively. Otherwise, they are just a standard infantry grunt. Likewise with the Assault Player and the Automatic Rifleman, they have Assault Rifles, Automatic Rifles, or SMGs that can be used to push the front line, clear trenches, or be more effective in the field. They also traditionally have Smoke Grenades as well, super handy for making sure that you can move from position to position. Next up is the Medic. The medic is very simple, they come with Morphine Surrettes, Smoke Grenades, and Bandages. They can bandage themselves quite frequently, they can revive other players who've already been taken out, and use smoke grenades to cover their approach and make sure that they can revive players. Next up is the support role or the supply role, uh, which is a standard rifle or SMG, but most importantly can drop down ordnance for teammates and supplies which are used to build garrisons and defensive structures. Support players are really essential on defensive objectives because they can build blockades, they can build defenses, and they can build structures that can really make a difference on an objective point. Next up, we have the Engineer, and the Engineer has a wrench, a hammer, a blowtorch, anti-personnel mines, and anti-tank mines. They can also even carry a high explosive satchel charge, depending on the level of your Engineer. The wrench is used to place more defensive structures, much like the support player. It's a very critical role for making sure that your players and objectives are defended. The Engineer role can also place resource nodes, and they have a hammer to build structures with, and a blowtorch to repair tanks. So critically important stuff, and the satchel charge can be really lethal, it can take out entire positions, destroy enemy spawn points, and definitely ruin some enemy vehicles. Most of them tend to have a timed fuse. Next up is the machine gunner, really simple, spray and pray, big machine gun goes burr, not really much that needs to be said on that front. You also have the anti-tank player. The anti-tank player can have a bazooka or panzerschreck, and anti-tank role on the Russian faction actually comes with an anti-material rifle. Aim for the rear of the tank and you will do damage. Do not at any given point as an anti-tank player shoot the front of the tank, you will be wasting your ammo. The only exception to this rule are recon tanks, which are really really small and really really nimble. You can hit those things side on and it will likely destroy them. A good anti-tank player usually has a good standard rifleman nearby in order to rearm them and get back into the action and destroy more tanks. You also have the spotter and sniper. Spotters and snipers work together to do recon, they can gather intelligence behind enemy lines and move slowly and cohesively as a smaller group. Recons and spotters generally are an entire division themselves, and a recon class is a sniper and spotter collectively. They also have, you know, a sniper rifle, very effective at taking out enemies at range. In a recon squad, the spotter is the person who liaises with the commander, so make sure you remember that. 
And of course, if you're building a tank team or a tank squad, the tank commander is the person who will relay with the commander and speak to the overall team and other squad leaders. There is also a standard crewman as well, which can use for gunning, driving, reconning, whatever it so happens to be that you want them to do within that tank. All of the roles in this game are fairly simple. However, if you're a support player, you are very, very important because getting supplies on the ground is very, very important. Medics also have a really good role in this game, but I would also say that anti-tank is very important in order to take out those enemy tanks and make sure that your team maintains momentum in the battlefield. Now let's talk about combat in Hell Let Loose. If you go into Hell Let Loose thinking this is Battlefield or Call of Duty, you're going to find yourself very quickly dead and very quickly in bad predicaments. Hell Let Loose is a lot of open land and you need to maneuver from cover to cover at any given cost. And I'm going to go over my basic principles for combat in Hell Let Loose. Number one, always move from cover to cover. Never ever ever move out in the open. Avoid big open fields, avoid places where it's only concealment and no hard cover. You always want some kind of hard or medium cover in between you and potential enemy players. Even if it's a tree, a tree stump, a mound, a trench, a bush line, whatever it so happens to be, you need something that is going to create a distance, something that will keep you safe and give you options to move away from certain situations. And the next most important thing is that you need to be prepared to allow players to come to you and not go to other players. If you get caught sprinting in Hell Let Loose, the time it takes for you to aim down your sight means that in some scenarios you're going to find yourself very quickly killed by the enemy team. Moving from cover to cover in Hell Let Loose means that you have time to take in your surroundings. You can listen for gunshots. You can see enemy players moving in between trees and bushes. You can see enemy tracers flying above your head. And these are the things that are most important. I almost treat it as if I'm taking camera photos every time I move. When I move to a position, I wait and I kind of take a snapshot of my surroundings. And I see if anything moves and I see if anything looks out of place or I see if anything makes some noise. And then I move again and then I do the same thing over and over again. It's about getting into a really good spot and getting into positions that give you an advantage. Whether it's something that has lots of cover, a height advantage, or just somewhere where people aren't expecting you. I always tend to sit in locations that people don't expect you to be in, like a tiny ditch that they're just not looking for, or somewhere near a main road, or somewhere near something that has a lot of action nearby. You know, it's really simple stuff. Obvious locations like big buildings tend to be really big attractors of gunfights and, and difficult situations. Whereas if you're just some weirdo sitting in a bush, people just aren't expecting that. My next big thing for combat is to take your time and pace yourself. People who play in gunfights in Hell Let Loose don't lose gunfights because they're in bad positions most of the time, they lose because they're less accurate. And there are certain things that you can do in order to boost the scenario, boost the odds of you winning a certain gunfight situation. If you see somebody who is running out in the open and has no cover around them, take a shot at them because you might be able to drop them. But if you see somebody who's in really hard cover, you really have to wait until you get that precision moment where you know you're absolutely going to nail them. Otherwise, you risk firing and revealing your position without getting much from it. There is a lot of recoil in Hell Let Loose as well, so burst firing your automatic weapon or slowly tap firing your semi-auto or bolt action weapon is very, very important. If you rush your shots or try to hit somebody too quickly or you don't pace yourself, you're going to find yourself missing more than you hit. Hell Let Loose also has a bullet velocity system, so if a target is far away in the distance, you do need to aim in front of them in order for that shot to connect at range. There is a big emphasis on suppression in this game as well, so if you are using an automatic weapon, even if somebody is quite far away from you and they start shooting at you, shoot back. Even if you don't hit that opponent, you're going to make it really difficult for anybody with a bolt action or semi-auto rifle to hit you on target if they're being suppressed very heavily. So those are really the basic principles. Always be in an advantageous situation where possible. Stay in cover, look for enemy players, and take your time. Do not rush yourself in Hell Let Loose. Do not rush yourself to different locations. Do not rush the shots that you're firing. Take your time, be patient, and let the situations come to you. Let the predicaments come to you. Next up, we have movement in Hell Let Loose. And we've already covered combat movement to some degree, and I talked a lot about moving from cover to cover. But moving from one objective to another objective is also very important. And the basic principle is very clear. The more direct you are in your movement, the more likely you are to die. If there is one main road between your defensive objective and the attacking objective and you run down that main road, 
there's a very high statistical chance that there is going to be an enemy waiting and waiting to look at you. Because enemies naturally will gravitate towards a certain location. A really good example I use for movement in Hell Let Loose is the cone system. The cone system is effectively a player's field of view, and traditionally between two objectives, the player will be looking directly where you will be coming from. They'll be expecting you to come straight off of your objective to their objective. So the further away you go from that, and the further outside of that cone you can get, the better. Yes, it means more walking, yes, it means more driving, yes, it means taking more time, but if you can build a garrison in a flanking position, you'll find yourself having much more fun and getting much more kills than if you approach them head on, because then you're just approaching a meat grinder. In order to get into these flanking positions and get far away from the enemy, it's really important that you keep yourself in a lot of cover. Use trench lines, use gullies, use rivers, use whatever you can to your disposal to hide from the enemy team. Bush lines are also really important, and all of these are visible on your map. You want to get into really good flanking positions by using as much cover as humanly possible and getting around the opponent. Nobody ever expects to be hit from the side or hit from behind, but they always expect to be hit from the front. And this method of movement is also massively important if you're somebody like an anti-tank player who's looking to hunt vehicles. Finally, let's talk vehicles. Now, I'm not a huge vehicle player in Hell Let Loose, but I can tell you a little bit from what I know and from what I've used. Vehicles at the moment in Hell Let Loose can be very finicky. You can very easily get stuck on things, so stick to main roads and open fields where possible. And remember the class of vehicle you're in. If you're in a massive heavy tank, you can take a hit or two but you will be slower and you will have more firepower. If you're in a medium tank, expect a couple trade-offs. And if you're in a light tank, you can do a lot of damage to infantry and be very nimble, but expect to die very quickly. These are things that are massively important and teamwork is hugely important when you're in any given vehicle in Hell Let Loose. And tanking is definitely a team effort. One really good tank can definitely change the tide of an objective. They can nail lots of players. And repair stations are also really important. So being a tank player and having good communication with your team and with the rest of your squads, very, very important. But when it comes to vehicles, information is gold. Having squads who are out in the open telling you where enemy tanks are before they can even see you is really, really important because tanks in Hell Let Loose can be sluggish. So getting into the right position and waiting for that tank to get into your killing zone is really, really important in Hell Let Loose. Find yourself much like in infantry combat, waiting for situations to come to you rather than you being the aggressor. Tanks work really well when they're bombarding objectives and using their machine gun to take out infantry, but they work twice as well when they're sitting in ambush positions with good trench coverage, good tree coverage, good bush coverage that allows them to ambush an enemy vehicle moving past them. But information is absolutely essential here. The more information you have and the more information you have on the enemy, the more you'll be able to do more damage. Vehicles in Hell Let Loose, of course, always have a damage system as well. You know, these aren't just tanks that if you hit them from any location, they're gonna die. They have full-blown armor systems. Your front armor is your best armor and it will keep you the safest from tank shells, infantry firing AT and everything in between. But if a tank gets around you or an AT hits you from the rear, your engine, your tracks and everything is at risk. Most tanks can survive maybe one or two hits from the rear at best. Your side is also a semi-weak point, but your front armor is most important. So folks, that's absolutely everything I have for Hell Let Loose on console. And feel free to go back and ask me questions in the comment section if you need more clarification on certain things. I'll be posting more tips and tricks for Hell Let Loose in the coming weeks as the console versions continue to release and people continue to get involved. And again, if you have any tips or any suggestions or things you want to see, let me know and I'll try and answer it. If this has helped, please like, please subscribe, and I'll catch you again in the next one.